I'm going to bring you all to the beginning, how this all started, just to kind of give you uh, just a little, I, you know, I don't even, I don't even, I don't even need to look at this, but um, until we, until we actually start sharing. Um, It all started about two weeks ago. I was sitting down in my recliner, I got off of work, and um, what took place was while I was, while I was sitting there, I felt, I felt the Spirit begin to speak in me, and it asked me a question. And what it asked me was, the Spirit says, or should you say God, God said, what time are we in? And, and I kind of hesitated for a minute, I said, Lord, I know what time we're in. I know where we're at. You know, and I just began to run through the scriptures of, of, of doing Passover and, you know, from back from Moses and Elijah and all of them when the sacrifice was done. And then coming to uh, Christ, being the Lamb of God. John said, he, I am, you know, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. This is things that is connected in my mind. And it brings me all the way back to the beginning. So when that took place, I'm like, okay, we're... We're two weeks before today, Pentecost, to take place. So I'm like, man, Lord, you know, what is it? What is it? So I called, I called up pastor, you know, and I said, hey, I feel like the Lord's telling me something. He says, yeah, what's that, man? He says, um, I said, the Lord asked me a question, and he asked me, what time are we in? And he said, okay. And he just began to tell me time that we're in. And I'm like, man, you're preaching to the choir, brother. I've been listening to it for 17 years. I know, you know. So I said, but brother, that's not it. He's like, okay. He says, you know, I'm actually sitting here wanting to know, okay, Lord, what is it that you want to show? What's, what is it, you know, I, I come here two weeks ago not having a message, message and my wife wound up ministering, promise, and I come the next week and instantly the Lord gave him something at the last minute and he brings it forth. Um, and he didn't know what to minister on. So I asked him the question that God asked me. And it's probably about 8 o'clock. And we hung up the phone. It was over. Um, the next day, uh, brother calls me up. He's like, hey, you want to meet? you know, up at the church, we'll sit down, you and I, and we'll just go through scriptures and stuff. He says, man, the Lord set something on fire in me. I'm like, yeah, let's get together. So we met up here, was here for a couple hours, man, and the Spirit of God just fell like unbelievable. Well, the thing was, it was about the signs. The signs. And what was coming forth? So we begin to take the sword and, and start clinging them together. Iron sharpens iron. And it just began to stir and stir and stir within us. Well, after that took place, we started looking at all the signs throughout the Word of God about the first coming of Christ and the second coming of Christ. Going back to the beginning. So, uh, we separate, we go home fired up fired up. We'll just begin to go through scripture after scripture after scripture. So, this is where it all began. So, I'm sitting down in my recliner and the Lord begins to show me something and I was totally devastated in what he showed me. And what's going on in me while I'm reading Yes, it was all about the signs of His coming and what was going to take place. You know, we all know that the heavens are going to rip open and, and the Christ is going to come. But there was one thing that God wanted to show me in the midst of Him telling me of the different signs of what's going to, what's going to happen. And we read over it all the time. I called up brother and I share it with him. And, and it... it it was like I was totally devastated to the point where I was scared. And I know we're not supposed to fear, right? But we know that God said that, you know, there's a day coming that there was never like, there, even since the beginning. 
since the beginning, it's never been a day like what is coming. So instantly, the Lord starts bringing me through the scriptures of judgment. And I'm not, listen to me, I'm not putting judgment on anybody or anything like that. So, so he starts showing me and showing me and showing me. And I'm like, my God, I'm totally looking at the scriptures in a different set of eyes. With a different heart, a different mindset. Going through Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, um, you know, just wherever judgment was poured out on the children of Israel, Korah, the ground opened up and swallowed them whole. You know what time that was? We all know what time it was. Brother just preached on it Wednesday, sharing everything. So, I'm watching judgment all the way through. Well, if we go to Hebrews chapter uh, uh, chapter 13, verse 8, what does it say? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we know that judgment is coming again. And like I said, I'm not here to pour judgment out on anybody because we are children of God. Okay? When I started looking at all the places after the Lord returns... Instantly, judgment is poured out everywhere. There's not one place you can go. I don't care where it's at. I began to share with brother. And then after sharing with him, it was like constantly, he was like, hey, look here, look here, look here, look here. So I'm getting a double dose of what's going on, of all these plagues, bowels that are going to pour out. Um... So I was like, okay, brother, okay. I, I mean, my mind is totally mush because God is pouring in at the same time. Brother, pastor, is showing me this and showing me that. To the point where at one time, you know, there was a famine in the land. And this is very important to what I'm about to say. Because in, in Amos chapter in Amos chapter 8, it says, God says, there's going to be a famine in the land, not of bread or water, but of the Spirit. So let's go through the scriptures, which we're going to talk because we know where it's at. Let's talk about when the children of Israel were in Egypt for what, 430 years? There was no voice of God being spoken for 430 years. Moses came in, broke the silence. From Malachi to Matthew, we have 400 years. 30 years later, here comes John. Breaks the silence. Behold, the Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world. But what he was saying was this. He was saying, Make your path straight. Repent and be ye baptized for remission of sins. He's warning you. And that's what God began to show me through the scripture after scripture after scripture. Began to show me warnings and signs of his coming. So from Matthew to Malachi, and from Malachi to Matthew, we have a, we have a time, there's no, there's, no, there's no God speaking. So we know in the, in the, in the last days, there's going, to be, there's going to be a time where, where God, the Spirit, is going to be moved, not out of you, don't get me wrong, the children of God, because he says, you'll not leave us nor forsake us. And he said, in that time, he, te he actually tells, it's going to be in, in, when he tells his disciples in Matthew to go off and go, and go share the word, you know, he sends them off as two, right? And he says, look, you get to the house and they don't accept you, you know, take nothing, leave nothing. Leave your way in peace, turn around, kick the dust off your feet and walk on. And that's leaving the curse within them. Because if the curse remains, judgment is going to stay. Right? The dust is cursed. The ground is cursed. Take nothing. So that's another time. Beware that house. That's a warning. So, uh, let's go. Let's get started, if we haven't already. Um, so, I'm gonna, we're going to go through some spots that we know that... Uh, she's, she's folding, no, it's too low for me. Um, we know that some, time, you know, some times are coming, and what's going to take place. You know, God shows us through the Word. But we kind of read, and we begin to 
um, just read and that's all we do we just read and we just go on and it, before you know it we're reading like in monotone if you understand what I mean there it just began begins just to be a big old run on and there's nothing kind of separating it you understand so so let's just look at the first sign which we know in Revelations 12 it tells us a sign. In Revelations 12, which we passed and went over it, he wasn't supposed to, but he did. Um, uh, Revelations 12, it talks about, let me, I'm going to get in, yeah, I already know what it is, but let me just show you. Just read it out so it's being recorded. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, and a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head crown of twelve stars. And she began to, and she began with with uh, child. I'm sorry. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, in pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great dragon, having seven heads, ten horns, seven crowns, and on his head, and his tail drew a third part of the heavens, the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to deliver. That was a sign. Okay? That sign showed in the time of Christ and before his birth, letting him know that a child was going to be born. Okay? And that Herod, I mean that dragon was Herod. Okay? So we're going to take that sign right there. That was, uh, we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 11. Real fast, Isaiah 11. So we know this is a prophecy that Isaiah is bringing forth, okay? <clears throat> I'm going to start at verse 1. And we're going to read through this chapter. Well, not the whole thing, but... um. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Okay? And then, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him... <coughs> Then, I'm sorry, rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom, understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. And shall make him a quick understanding in the, understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eye, neither reprove after the hearing of his ear. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, judge the poor, and reprove with, um, what is that, equity? Equity, I'm sorry, for the meek, it was split up on me in two parts. For the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. Well, first off, you hear what happened there? It spoke of his coming, and then it spoke of the rod, judgment. Okay? Two parts. That's what's there. And with, his, with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked, judgment. Bringing us to his second coming. So we know out of the root of Jesse came David. And out of the seed of David, Jesus Christ. Okay, the son of man. Okay. So, from there, it spoke of his first coming. Now it spoke of his second coming. In the same paragraph. Or if it, that's what, if it's called. Okay. Um, now watch this. After... The wrath comes forth. Watch what is spoken here. In righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins. In faithfulness the girdle of his, his reins. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. And the leopard shall lie down with the kid. And the calf and the young lion and the fatlings together. And a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed their young. One shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. What is going on here? 
You understand this? Where does he bring them? So we have the, the coming of Christ. Okay? Then we have the coming of Christ again. Because the first time he came, there was no judgment on, on us. I'm coming back to this. On us. I'm coming back to this judgment. And then he comes again. And then the wrath to the wicked, the vials, which is going to bring us to Revelation 16, that are opened up. And then, guess what? He brings us into the garden. Heaven. The lion is going to eat straw like the ox. Why? Because when it brings us back to the garden, there was no death yeah. before Adam sinned. Or should it after Adam, before, did I say that right? Before Adam sinned? Yeah. There was no death. So there was no meat, meat eating. So he brings us to the garden. And the, sucking, and, and the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp. You know what that is? That's a serpent. A snake. Yeah. And the weaned child shall, shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. That's the, that's the viper's den. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. They shall not hurt nor destroy all my holy mountain for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord and the waters as the waters covered the seas so we go from his first coming his second coming judgment where and we in the garden reigning with the in heaven with him okay now watch this now it says, in that day, what day? The day of his coming. Well, what day is this one? This is going to speak of his first coming. There shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people to it shall the Gentiles seek. Well, brother brought something up last no, uh, Wednesday again about the Gentiles, those wise men. Okay, they were Gentiles, they were foreign origin, and they come to seek out for Jesus. When they get to Herod, y'all know the story. I don't want to preach to the choir, but this isn't what I'm wanting to get to or what God had showed me. But this, yeah, this is all things showing and pointing to what's going to happen. Which shall stand for an ensign for the people, and shall the Gentiles seek. And his, and his rest shall be glorious. That's because we can come to him through his blood and we can rest now. And we ain't got to worry about the, the wickedness of this world. Man, we thank you, Lord, for dying for us, being that lamb. And it shall come to pass, here it is again, in that day, and that day is always referring, referring to the day of the Lord. In that day, that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from. And it gives you different parts. That is amazing. It's all, it's all played out right there in front of us. So... I want to go to, I want to bring y'all to, um, I want to bring, I want to go to Luke chapter 22, okay, and we're going to read here, and this is where it's going to lead to what um, God began to crush my mind. From Luke 22 and uh, Luke 23, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip from Luke 22 because I want to show you a second coming and a fir and the first coming and a second coming just while they're in a guard. Okay? And we're going to flip and we're going to wind up going to Matthew 26. It's going to be the other part where these two go together where they're in a guard. Okay? Um... Let's start at uh, 
Let's start here. Let me start at uh, 28. Let me start at 28. Uh, 22, 28. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptation. So, right there, the, what's going on? They're in a the garden. Let me just kind of do a little quick. They're in a the garden, and, you know, God's speaking, you know, Christ is speaking with them, and he's, you know, they begin to, well, who's going to be in the kingdom? You know, sit by, or be greater in the kingdom, this, that, and the other, okay? And then, watch this, he says, I appoint unto you a kingdom as my Father has appointed unto me. So he's telling them, listen, I'm bringing you, I'm telling you something, I'm bringing you to the end, because I'm, gonna, I'm trying to get you to come with me to a kingdom that the Father has, okay? You understand what I'm saying? It's bringing us from the beginning, now he's jumping all the way to the end. He's preparing a kingdom for them, okay? That ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on the thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. You know, I don't know if this is right. You know, when I go into Revelations and I read about, you know, when John seen the twelve, you know, I mean the twenty-four elders, man, could twelve of them be... Maybe, possibly, the apostles. I have no idea. I'm not saying it is. It's just something I think about. Because he's telling them that they're going to sit on a throne judging the 12 tribes. It's just something that popped in my mind. I just kind of throw that out there. Throw the line. Look, if you don't like it, throw it out. I'm just coming me, okay? Um, now watch this. We know in the end times, the times are going to get great and hard. And we're going to go through some things or whatever, you know. And, oh, we know that there's, let's not even think about end times. Let's think about now. Anybody going through something? But watch this. Watch what he says. And the Lord said, Simon, behold. Everybody say their name. Yeah. Say your name. Oh. Yeah. Satan has desired to have you. That's right. <coughs> That ye may sift you as wheat. Right, right now. Okay. Yeah. He's speaking about future. What's going to take place. But Jesus says this. I have prayed for you. Doesn't the Bible say that Jesus is in the holy place. Always an intercessor. That's right. He's not reigning as king yet. We all know he is king, oh, yeah. but he's not reigning as king because he says he's going to come and rule with the rod of iron, yeah. right? Now, the father sitting on the throne. Christ is down here praying for us to the father. And that's what the Bible tells us he's doing because he is the high priest, always an intercessor. And this is the work of the high priest right here, okay? But I have prayed for thee, that thy, thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. We need to strengthen one another. There's times we go through. There's times you go through. That that's why I need Matthew and Vicky, you know, John. You know, all of us, we need one another to strengthen one another. Remain. Don't move. I don't care what it is. Don't move. Remain. Yeah. It's not just, you know, in times. It's not just in times. Right. It's now. Right. It speaks of it now. Right. Because Christ told him to Simon. Right. He desires to sift you out like wheat. And he had said unto him, Lord, I'm ready to go with thee now both into prison and to death. Well, let's take out Peter. Let's look at Peter for a minute. Let's, if we look at Peter, we paint a picture in our mind, oh Peter, let me tell you who Peter is. Peter's bad. Why is he bad? This is a man that is a sailor, a fisherman, and he pulls nets. Yeah. I promise you, his right arm, if he was right arm, right-handed, was bigger than his left because he pulled nets out of the water full of fish. 
You don't have, you just, I know when I'm on a job site and I'm on a construction site and I'm looking at a sheetrock guy, he's holding up 12 foot sheet of sheetrock, five eighths with one arm on a ceiling and the left arm is going zit, 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 zit. When he comes down and you see the size of his right arm, it's the twice the size of his left. So I promise you that man was bad, strong. He was ready. But one problem is, one problem. A lot of people say, yeah, Lord, I'll die for you. I'll die for you. The problem is the whole world says it. I know for a fact, I go to the prison, pastor and I, Pete and I, they all say, Peter's a witness. Peter's a witness. What do they say? Yeah, I'll die for Christ. Peter said the same thing, and Peter walked hand in hand. Actually slept beside him. Ate dinner with him. It was like you and your bride was Jesus and Peter and James and John and Matthew. All of them, they were like, yeah. They, they stayed together for three and a half years. They were never separated when, until Jesus sent, started sending them out. Sending them out. Sending them out. What's the problem here? There's no spirit. There's only one with the spirit. That's Jesus Christ. Okay? John, he thought he was ready. So praise God that we know for sure that he's praying for us. And he sent that helper to be here with us. And he, you know, that's the warning. Okay? So, right here. I mean, that right there is just amazing within itself. I mean, that can take off in a, in a whole sermon within itself. So, um, let's go. I want to go ahead and, and, and turn to, uh, to uh, Luke 23. I think it's Luke 23. spot I might be back in 24 I'm sorry I mean 22 I'm sorry go back to 22 um when they go into the garden uh, let's start at put a stone cast away let's start at 40 let me see what what happens right here and when he uh, 22 40 and when he was at the place he said unto them Okay, this is, okay, let me back. He's in the garden. He brings them to the garden. Okay, the garden of Gethsemane. And he tells his disciples to stay here and pray. All right? Here we go. Um, and when he was, at the, he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And, you, and he was withdrawn from them about a stone cast. And he kneeled down and he prayed. Saying, Father, if thou, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Remember, what is this all about? I'm bringing you to judgment is what I'm bringing you. Okay? That's what, I'm, that's, what we, that's what we're talking about. Warning, warning, warning. But in the midst of me showing, there's things that come out. Knowing that in the times that we have in trouble, that Christ is praying okay that's yeah. just kind of keep it in line where you know where I'm at all right saying father if thou be willing remove this cup from me nevertheless not my will but thy be done and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven strengthening him that even in Christ has the spirit in him and he knows what he's going to go through which we're about to go through that in a minute we're going to read what happened what did God do he sent another angel to strengthen him and if I'm not mistaken when when Christ was on you know after he he, uh, he was baptized he goes into the wilderness for 40 days and after 40 days, Lucifer comes to him 
and begins to tempt him and after the tempting the temptations that he brings what is what happens what does God do God sends angels to minister unto him so that right I mean that's another picture of what's what's happening okay man so he didn't establish it one time, two times. Just in what I just said, that he sends the helper. There's one. Then he sends him to Jesus. There's two in the garden. And then he did it again. When he sent the angel to minister to him with the temptation. You know, because he just went through all the temptations. There's three. Not one witness, two witness. Let three be a witness. We got more, I'm sure. And I'm sure there's probably things popping in your mind that you could think of when God sent the angel to help. Man, I can go through the Old Covenant a hundred times and show you. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening in him. And being in agony, in agony, agony or as I say that right, um, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer, he was coming to his disciples and he had found them sleeping for sorrow and said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. And while he was yet speak, behold, a multitude and he that was called Judas. I'm going to stop there. He comes to Christ, he comes to his disciples and they were sleeping. That's actually the third time. But he doesn't wake them up the second time. The first time, you're going to get it in Matthew. So if you go to Matthew, it's going to give you the full account when Christ comes to him. So let's turn to Matthew. Remember, we're showing his coming, and it's hidden in the story. Watch this. I'm going to start at 36. Matthew 26, 36. Y'all want me to wait a second? I will. Oh, y'all want me to go? Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And he said unto the disciples, Matthew 26, 36. Yeah. Sit ye here while I go and pray and when I go pray yonder. He must have been country. Over yonder, huh? Really? <laughs> and he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John, the sons of thunder, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exciting and sorrowful even unto death tarry ye here and watch with me now he tells this is amazing he takes Peter James and John Peter we just come through Peter for a second how bad Peter can be I would imagine when Remember, Jesus wasn't comely to look upon at all. The Bible, you know, tells you. You go through the scriptures, you'll find out who he is. Y'all know that. And he takes three, Peter, James, and John. Well, watch this. Peter's got to be bad. Because I know me being a construction worker, working on the job site, man, they got some bad dudes out there. Okay? Now, Christ, I hate to say... Well, no, I, I, I can say because he come gentle as a lamb. He ain't going to do anything. He ain't going to raise his voice. He ain't going to lift his hand. He's going to be so soft-spoken. But then we see another picture when he come into the house of God and he turn the tables. He takes Peter. James and John are the brothers of thun the, thun the sons of thunder man so we got to be looking at three bad dudes and he tells them wait here and watch please watch now he's got three bodyguards let's just say that okay let's just say he's got three bodyguards um what she don't need 
Come on. We know that. Don't take me wrong, please. Don't take me wrong out there, please. You out there. You know. And he took P and he took him, Peter, and the sons of thunder, Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then then saith he unto them, My soul is exciting sorrowful, and unto death tarry he ye here, and watch for me. And he went a little further, and fell on his face, and prayed, um, saying, O oh my father, is it possible let this cup, that cup, pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will be as thou wilt. And he had come in unto the disciple and found them asleep and said unto Peter, Chris, that's enough. What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? So there's a picture of Christ. He comes to the disciples' church. And guess what? The church is sleeping when Christ was born and he came the first time. Guess what? His own people were sleeping. They did not even know the sign that he was coming. They were blinded to what was there. First time, first coming. The church is sleeping. Then, let's see what happens. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them sleeping again the second time. But watch this. He doesn't wake them up. There's something there. What do you mean? There's something there. Well, we're sleeping all the time, and God passes, Christ passes through, and he leaves. And he finds his church still sleeping, still sleeping, still sleeping. Let's go a little further. And we don't know that he passes through. Why? Because we're sleeping. And, if he, and he came and found unto them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he had left and went away. And again, he prayed the third time, Lord, please wake up my church. Wake up my church so that they know that I'm coming. So they don't fall under wrath or destruction. Wake my church up, Lord. Those who have ears, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Revelations chapter 2, when he writes the letters to the churches. After every church, he says, What? Those who have ears. Why? We already know that God restored the hearing with Jesus Christ when he died in the garden. And he restored the hearing unto man. We know that. We've been there. Let me open something else to you. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said this, when I am gone, I am going to send a helper, and that helper is going to speak not of himself, but of me. Listen to what he's telling you so you understand, and he will lead you to me. If you have an ear to hear, listen to him. Those who have ears, let them hear. Your hearing's been restored. Now listen to it. And he says that to all the churches. Go into the book of Revelation chapter 2 and find out what church are you. And I'm not talking about us as a whole. I'm talking about you as a church individual. Where was I? And he went again a second time and he went and prayed, Oh my Father, that's verse 42, and this cup may not pass from me. Verse 43, And he had came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them, and he, I mean he left them, and he went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. So we know that he comes the first time, was sleeping the second time, he didn't say anything. 
because he comes in and out of our life to check on us. Then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now, the third time, and take your rest. Behold, an hour is at hand that the Son of Man is betrayed in the hands of the sinner. So there it is. He lets us know that when he comes, he always finds us sleeping. But no, not us. Wake up. Find out. Listen to the Spirit. Don't let him find us sleeping because guess what? We'll miss him. Let's go. Now, they, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this to the side. Y'all know the stories. I'm sure you do. I'm going to bring you out to a place where God has brought me. I'm going to set the stage. Oh, Lord, help me, Father. <clears throat> Sitting down in my chair, um, and, I, and I begin to read the things that I'm reading to y'all, and the things that the Lord begins to show me. Well, when I got into Luke chapter 23, and it was talking to you know, what Christ goes through, bringing y'all to judgment, okay? I'm going to ask a quick question. When the first time that Jesus Christ came, was there judgment? Was there judgment the first time Jesus came? Answer the question, please. Are you sure? Was there judgment the first time Jesus Christ came? Yes, there was. The problem is, we weren't there. Meaning, not us, personally, like being in the time. I'm talking about we did not bear the judgment. Now, what's crazy, let's step back. They come into the, they, they came in, he found his church sleeping. And when they come in to get him, they say, Jesus says, who do you seek? And they say, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am. The power of God, the Spirit, because he spoke the voice of God, they fall. That's the part, that part right there is not, I don't, that one is not in Luke 23. It's going to be in one of the other Gospels, okay? So, when they grab Christ, we already know Peter, cuts off the ear, did it, that's not where we're going. So, they take Christ and they bring him into the courts or wherever by the high priest. And now they're going to begin to examine him or, and try to get him, you know, to in false accusations. The thing is, none of the false accusations standed against him because there was never a witness to what he, they accused him for. So there was four accusers that came up to him. None of them said the same thing. Anybody else can, can verify that? Nobody said anything. Another one said something. Anybody else can verify that? Nobody said anything. You know what? So the chief priest, that's the high priest, says this. Enough with this foolishness. Let's get to the bottom of it. Are you the son of God? While they mock him and this, that, and the other. And Christ is standing there. You said it. And you will see me high and lifted up. Seated on the right hand side of the throne. So mild. And so meek. That lamb. That ram. That lamb that was growed up as a ram. <coughs> he rips his coat. God don't want to rip our flesh. He wants to rip our heart so we can understand who he is. If he rips our heart and we get to understand who he is, this flesh will be, will be gone. Blasphemy! And he brings him to Pilate. Remember the first sign? The dragon at the feet waiting to kill and we know who that is right Herod trying to take the firstborn correct there's your first sign that Herod died 
He's no longer there. They bring him to Pilate. Pilate, da da da, he said, they need to accuse him. And they say, you know, this is the feast of a release. And Barabbas or Barnabas, whatever his name is, you know, they wind up releasing unto him instead of Jesus. Well, they say something. And they say, Her Herod, Pilate's like, Herod, what? Galilean is what he says. He, he's not even in my jurisdiction. Bring him to Herod, the dragon, second time. There it is. The first time, Herod, the dragon to kill baby Jesus and all the kids, babies two years old and under, die. They bring him again back to Herod, his son. There's your sign. Now, they bring him back to Pilate. I wash my hands of him, the lamb without. So now, while I'm reading, this is the stuff that the Lord's showing me. Now it gets unbearable. For when that took place of him saying, I am son of God, or really he didn't put it necessarily in those words. He says, you said it. He says, they begin to kick, punch, bruise, slap, hit, whatever you can possibly think of, it begins. It says that John, not at this time, I'm going to bring you to Revelation 1. John was caught up in the Spirit on the Lord's day. I'm not going to say that I was caught up in the Spirit on the Lord's day. I'm not going to say that. But what I am going to tell you, that the flashes of the images and the visions that I was seeing, my God, and I'm going to give it to you like he gave it to me. First off, we know that Christ was what? Naked and openly exposed before the people. Naked! And if you do a study or you begin to watch a Roman sculpture and begin to find out what it is, let's go to the garden. God kills the lamb. What has to come off the lamb? It's hide the skin. Moses, the lamb, all Isaac, Abraham, Jacob, Joseph, I don't care where you go. They're all the same. Hebrews 13, 8, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's find out what judgment is. <clears throat> they bring Christ to a place and his clothes is off, his robe, no, I'm sorry. Let me back up. <clears throat> he's about to go through judgment, and he knows what he's about to go through. He's going to be kicked, punched, bruised, slapped, hit, whatever they can find, probably stoned. I mean, we don't know for sure. But that right there was the easy part. I hate to say it like that. Don't take it wrong. Because it hasn't started. When they lay him out, the cattails and the meat hooks, and he's naked. And the images that he begins to show, your mind, and I, I would walk. And I would walk, and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. We had to go to Chalmette, and I'm in the car, and I'm with my wife. For an hour, I was weeping because the images were coming. And I'm trying to tell my wife, and I was just torn, no, no. If it hooked his groin, it was ripped off. If it caught his eyelid, it was off. 
we don't understand today I got to tell you something that he told me and it's in the scripture my God it's coming so now you have an image in your head there wasn't a hair on his body because guess what there wasn't a hair on the lamb a wool on that lamb and he was the lamb it had to be removed the skin had to be removed the flesh could not be on the sacrifice at all They bring him into a place. And he uttered not a word. In Luke 23, they go up to him. And they're still hitting him. After he's ripped the shreds. What did they see? that did not affect them but God said there's a time coming that there will never be like there ever was before that when he when he's there they take off his clothes his or well, they have a, his coat they take off his coat to cover him up after whatever they did <clears throat> And they put a red scarlet robe around him. Well, if you know the story of Joseph, when he comes to his father, the robe that Joseph wore. When you look up that word, scarlet in your Hebrew strongs, let me see if I got the number there. No, I don't. It connects you and it means wheat, corn, grain. That's the only spot that even that even gives that. And it's only one little sin, one little sentence. Period. Boom. And they take off. Well, we know that the wheat, the corn, and the grain, all provision is made through Jesus Christ. Guess what? Through the story of Joseph, Joseph had the provision for all the children. And it had to come to him. Joseph had a crown on his head and a rod in his hand. They said they put a reed in Jesus' hand and a crown on his head and a scarlet robe. Brings you back to Joseph. That one little sentence me brings it to Joseph. They take it off. And they take his coat and they put it back on him. And it says, it's without seam. Why? Because it's fit for a king. And when a king wore his clothes, there was no seam in it. It was perfect. That's that's my king. My king. They bring him into the streets and he's carrying a cross. I don't know how. And he said nothing. Does everybody have the picture that's there? Let's find out what Jesus said. Because he said something. After all of that, he said something. That is mind-blowing. And I'm going to go to Luke 23, 27. And there followed him a great company of people and of women 
which also bewailed and lamented him. They cried and mourned and screamed at what they were seeing. Carrying a cross, ripped apart, or ripped to shreds. Here it is, verse 28. But Jesus turning unto them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me. Are you crazy? Are you insane? Have you lost your mind? I think if it would have been silence throughout the city, instead of the screaming, kicking and punching and this, that and the other and whipping him even while he was carrying that cross and they would have heard him say this, he was like, my God, how can a man take that? Because a man cannot, only God. <clears throat> but weep for yourselves and for your children. He tells a prophecy while he's carrying the cross and ripped apart. For behold, the days are coming in the, in, in the which they shall say, Blessed are those bearing in the wombs that, do, that never bear, in the paps which never give suck. This leaves it somewhere else and we don't have time to go there. But for him to tell you that, what is it that you go into Matthew 24, he says. This is all about the end times. Woe is the woman that is bearing and gives suck in those days. Is he making a connection? Absolutely. Watch the next one. Then, then shall they begin to say to the mountains he's talking about his coming so before his coming there's going to be some oh my god what judgment is coming or oh, what what plagues are coming then shall they begin to say to the mountains fall on us and the hills to cover us why is that revelation 16 the vows of God and it says that God remembered what they did now this brings this through to the evil one and what they do and what they do hidden what they think they hidden from the Lord but let me tell you something the Bible says in Revelations that when he comes that the mountains move and the islands move and he exposes their nakedness and in the judgment and the wrath of God comes but you know what I fear not because I'm his. Thank you, Lord, for taking that. And I don't have to partake of your wrath. Thank you for being in this holy place and praying for me and us so we don't have to partake in that judgment. David, he said, Lord, I don't want to fall under judgment of man but let me fall into yours. Warnings. The Lord shows me in Revelations 1, just in the first few, chat, first, first few verses up to 7. There's three warnings in it before it's coming. And then he describes where he's at, the holy place that he's taken up. And then he starts bringing up the churches. But yet, I have this against you, and this against you, and this against you. I'll remove your candlestick. I'll take the light out of you. I'll remove the Holy Spirit. Return back unto your first love. Return back unto your first love. Father, we thank you for this morning, Lord.
Father, I want to hear whatever the Spirit is saying, Lord. Those who have ears, let us hear. I, I do, Lord. Please, and don't let, it, let me lose it. Keep praying for us, Father. Stay in that holy place. Father, you have prepared a place for us. Lord, and I want to be there with you. Father, I lift up all our families. Lord, to have your spirit be poured out. Begin to move upon those, that dead land, Lord. Let's move upon the waters, Lord, and bring forth, you know, you, Father. We thank you and we love you. You're truly amazing. I mean, there's nothing we can say that can bear to that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.